there, welcome back. Today we are making May Day baskets. By that I mean hanging conical baskets all out of cookies that you can fill with other very light cookies or flowers or candies. Perfect for May Day or just any time of year, weddings, anniversaries. I'm trying to create one that's got sort of a vintage effect similar to those that you see in front of me. These are all work in process, so they're still drying. They're upside down. I'll hang one right side up at the end. But this one's got a vintage sort of paper wrap around the outside, as does this one. And they've all been kind of antiqued with a little bit of gilding. So that's where we're headed. This project is a cookie project, and it's 3D, but it's pretty simple as far as 3D projects goes, insofar as it only requires three triangular cookies. And those I cut with a a custom template because I didn't find any available at the store that I liked of this particular dimension. These are about oh three and a quarter inch wide and four and an eighth inch from base to tip and I'll have the template link in my video description as well as on my website so if you need that you can get that easily. So cut those out and before cooking what you want to do is cut a hole in the wide end that's going to receive ribbon later so that we can hang those but you want to cut those before baking. And to start this project, you want to get your cookies fully decorated and iced and completely dry before you assemble. This is largely an assembly video, though I am going to show you how I antiqued the paper um, to finish off one side of the triangle. I've got three cookies already, uh, two and a half cookies already finished. The tops were iced in white icing and rose icing and dotted with brown. And this is the frosting sheet paper application that we're talking about. And I'm going to do that directly onto the naked cookie. Frosting sheet will stick to a naked cookie, whereas wafer paper will not. This is a stamping and gilding technique. And I happened to find this beautiful script stamp at Red Lead here in St. Louis, which is one of my favorite suppliers of stamps and, and other crafting stuff for non-edibles. And what I'm doing is just inking my stamp pad. You can also ink a stack of paper towels if you don't have an uninked stamp pad. They're a little hard to find online, though I will have my sources in the video description. With a little bit of brown food coloring, so this is completely edible. Great to use food safe stamps and also to sanitize them before use and use them only with food coloring. So I'm going to ink the entire stamp pad. And this is pretty big, so I want to, it's going to take me a little while to get even coverage. This is a self-adhesive type stamp. It's mounted to an acrylic block and peels off so I can change out stamps on here. You'll see me do that in a lot of my videos. Inking, inking, inking. I think I've got that pretty well inked. And to get across here, I need, need at least two repetitions of this, and I might need it a little deeper as well. So I'm going to do, I'm going to stamp this a few times, at least a couple times across, just to get the script down. That looks pretty good. It's okay if it's not perfectly straight or even because we're going for a vintage look here and a little imperfection is good in that scenario. Inking, 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 and I, I definitely want to re-ink this one between presses because it's so big and takes a lot of ink. Now I want to overlap these a teeny bit because my stamp doesn't come, you'll see, all the way up to the edge, but so that my script is continuous I want to make sure the edge of the stamp as I'm viewing it from top down actually overlaps the script a little bit. Press again and that way hopefully the script will meet when I pick it up. It's not so scientific, but didn't quite meet, but that's okay. We'll mask that a little bit. And let's just make sure that's deep enough to cover this area of the cookie. It is. And then the next part of this process to make it look kind of vintage is to blot it with a little bit of gold luster spray. You'll see those, that effect here. That's gold luster spray that's been blotted on top of the stamp. For the gold luster spray, I'm working with the PME brand Gold Luster Spray, and there are other different brands of this. They all work pretty, pretty equally well. You want to shake this up before you use it. I'm not going to be spraying it wildly. I'm just going to be spraying it directly onto my sponge brush at pretty close range. If you wanted to set up a screen to kind of prevent the, the overflow of the spray from getting everywhere, feel free to do it. This is going to be pretty contained because I'm not spraying everywhere. I'm just a couple of squirts. And then I'm just going to blot it on. I'm covering a little bit of that area where the stamp did not come together just to kind of conceal that. And then I would let this dry until it was not smudgeable to the touch, which might be a half an hour or so. But to dry it, I actually also stick it back into a resealable plastic bag because remember, frosting sheets of exposed air will dry out and get cr crackly. So it'll take a little longer to dry inside that bag, but you don't want 
you just want the ink to dry, you don't want the paper to dry is the point. So I've got one that I did earlier and you can see what I mean by how I stored it. I'm just gonna pull that one out and we're gonna use that one. Now to get it onto the cookie, I won't need this entire piece obviously, it's big, but I wanna plant it in such a way that I've got the nicest area. I'm just gonna dead center it. So I'm just right now just kind of getting rough placement of it and shaping the frosting sheet to the area that I wanna cover and I'm gonna trim it down to a more manageable size and we'll do the fine trimming once it's on the cookie. Okay, now to stick down frosting sheets, as I said, they will stick to naked cookies. And just um, apply a little bit of corn syrup to the back, just so it's tacky. You don't want too much or you can see through it. And that will leave a little spot on the cookie that you may not want. Though with this vintage effect, a little bit of unevenness, even with a corn syrup application, probably would look pretty natural. I'm just gonna fit it onto here. We're gonna take it a little bit around the corners here so there's not a big gap on the sides. Just cleaning my hands of corn syrup because I don't wanna press with corn syrupy hands on top. Or you'll see that splotch of corn syrup on the cookie. So doing my fine fitting and now I'll come back in and trim this down further. kind of been on a wafer paper and frosting sheet kick, especially making wafer paper flowers, which we'll talk about in, the, in the, one of the next videos. They're really fantastic for flowers because the flowers are so lightweight. Okay, so just fitting it down, making sure it's attached everywhere. I have a little extra at the tip that I can clip off without clipping into the cookie. And there you've got a nice sort of antique vintage picture on that. Now you could have iced the cookie with icing and then stamped on it and done the same effect, but that's a little trickier to do on these narrow pieces because the stamp will not stamp very close to the edge. You never really, you can never really stamp to the edge of a cookie on icing. So you'd, always, you'd have a little bit of margin that was unstamped. And I didn't like that look. I preferred to have it wrap all the way around the edge, which is why I chose to use paper. But if you would prefer to use icing and ice the whole cookie, that's fine too, because wafer paper can kind of have a, a gummy kind of taste to it or texture to it, and you may not like that. Now we're gonna move on to assembling these pieces. Normally I would let this dry a little bit longer, so it's a little easier to handle, the paper that is. But we're gonna go ahead and move forward for assembly. Now this 3D assembly is not an example of the sandwiching technique, which I've been showing a lot in my recent videos. It's instead an example of the miter, 3D mitering technique, where you miter the corners of a box to make sure that things fit nicely together. So here's an example of an unmitered corner. It's just squared off the way it was normally baked. And here's one I've shaved at a 45 degree angle. And that's just gonna ensure a better fit of the pieces together when I put them in 3D. I'm gonna be putting, I'm gonna be mounting them in 3D upside down. So here's, here's a side that's been mitered. There's a little bit of warp to this cookie. It's, it's bent as it dried. So you'll see I've got a gap at the top. I don't think I can improve upon that fit, um, but I will fill that with icing and hopefully that'll, be, that'll disappear. But if you were trying to fit an unmitered side with an unmitered side, you just have a much more bulky corner. And I think you can see that because most, most of that corner is, is exposed. And I want to get as tight a seam as possible. So I've pre-mitered all those corners except for the one on the cookie that I just did. So I want to show you how I do that. I'm going to get my glasses on for this. There are different ways to do this. It does make a mess, so I'm going to get these other cookies out of the way. We'll come back to them later. I, sh I pair the edge. This is why I like to wait for the paper to dry because it can come up if it's not stuck down completely. I pair as I would an apple, just gently shave. To start, I do kind of, a, and I'm just shaving the corner on a 45 degree angle. This is where I get like the bulk of the cookie off. And then I'll do fine pairing with, with um, a micro, micro planer. You won't have that kind of tear if you wait for the paper to dry a little bit longer, like half an hour, 45 minutes. It'll be thoroughly stuck down. And then I'll do finer shaving of it on a grater or microplaner to really get it where I want it. 
Again, my paper is lifting a little bit. I come in, I'll fix that before it goes down onto the final cookie. And you'll see I'm beginning to get a nice mitered edge on that. Before I go much further, and I'm doing all the pieces, kind of, I'm fitting them together as I go. You know, I'm fitting it to the one that's next closest to it. I feel like it's a nice fit through here, through the middle, and, and actually pretty much towards the top. But I could get a little closer at the bottom. So I'm just going to do a, a, a little bit more mitering along this edge here. And once I've got that where I want it, we'll put it together. Okay, I've mitered all the corners to get a sufficient fit. And, on all both of the long sides. You don't need to miter the one that obviously isn't going to be a joint. And they're not a perfect fit, but they're certainly better than when they started, and I'll be able to fill a lot with icing. Now I'd like to work on a surface that I can move later, because these will take some time to dry before I can pick them up. So I'm working on styrofoam. You could work on a piece of cardboard, but this styrofoam is pretty sturdy. And I've got it lined with bubble wrap as well. That, that's important to do if, if you've got a lot of delicate decorating on the outside of these pieces. So basically I'm going to glue them all together so they stand in a pyramid. And I'm going to start with the two back pieces. Fit them along that seam. Okay, so for this process, again, back to my thick royal icing glue, I'm just going to apply a bunch along the seam. And then stick these two together. And I've got a gap at the top, as I said, that I think these triangles have warped a little bit, but I'm going to fill that in with icing. We'll come back and look at the seams from the outside once I get them pieced together. And, and some people ask, well, why don't you do two sides and then come back and do the third side later? It's that's because if I get the these not positioned at the right angle and I come back in later after they've dried in place to put in the the final panel and it doesn't fit then I have to deconstruct the whole thing so it's better this icing might be just a little too thick it's not really sticking to my cookie so well so I've gotten both seams on this one and I'm fitting it in here next to the others. And this is where I'm going to really make sure they come together as best they possibly can. Okay, so now I am ready to move on to making these outer seams look a little bit prettier. And to do that, and to fill in some of the big gaps. So to do that, I'm going to come down these seams with, I'm going to be putting big brown seams down them with a star border, but I like to fill in with a little bit of icing first, just to even out, even out the seam a little bit, because that makes the laying of that star border a little bit easier to do. So in areas where I have white icing down, I'll fill in with white icing, just, and then flatten it a little bit. That'll also conceal any of that gingerbread that's showing. It'll be just less visible in the end result. So we're going to do all the white areas here. And I haven't waited for this step of the process at all. There's really no need to. I am going to turn this on its side and reinforce the inside of the basket from the inside. When I do that, we do want to wait a little more time for this to dry. Okay, I've got a slightly looser brown, which I think is just going to adhere to these seams a little bit better. And this is just, again, a, a process of filling out this gap. You could use a, a fondant tool to smooth in there, like a, a ball tool. I'm just using a clean finger. That's a process of filling out the gap so that the border, the bigger border I put down on it later is going to just lie flatter. This is actually pretty tight through here, but I had a big hole at the top, so I filled it pretty generously. Okay, good. So now at this stage, what I would do is let this dry probably for half an hour or so. Clean off this, this bubble wrap and lay it on its side and reinforce the inside of the box with more icing. Because as you saw, I didn't get a ton on the seams because I didn't want it smushing out everywhere. But it's important to get it reinforced fully from the inside so that the basket doesn't fall apart when you lift it up. So I'm going to clean off my hands, let that dry a little bit, and then we'll come back and reinforce the inside and then lay down the outside borders. 
Okay, so now I've got it on its side after half an hour or so of drying and I want to reinforce as far as I can to the inside with brown icing. I'm going to rotate this towards the camera. I'm just squeezing a generous amount up through that inner seam and pressing it in lightly with my fingertip. I'm going about two thirds of the way down and that just gives some added reinforcement. I'm going to do that on each corner. And then we'll turn it back upright and do the decorative seams on the outside, which are really going to clean it up, make it look pretty. Okay, just one more to go and we'll flip it up. Right. Okay, so now we're, it's dried for a while. I've reinforced the inside. I'm ready to put on my decorative outside borders. And I, this is one of those rare occasions where I use a metal tip because I want to get a little bit of texture. And I happen to like the star tip. You can use other decorative tips. I've got a number 27 here. And what I'm going to do is start by applying pressure and then releasing pressure and pulling down, applying pressure, releasing pressure, pulling down, and kind of overlap these little trailing stars, if you will. So applying pressure, pulling down, applying pressure, pulling down. And I'm making sure I'm covering all that icing that I used. I want as small, I want as small a seam as possible because I just think that looks better. But I want to make sure I'm covering all that filler icing I put in earlier. And because I put it in, it's much easier for me to pipe a nice uniform border because I've got a flat surface underneath. And here you'll see finished side looking pretty darn good. It's looking pretty good. I'm going a little bit wider at the bottom just because my seam was wider at the bottom. At the, t at the in the white area and then I also like to clean up that little edge. Now when this is completely dry what I can do is come back in and gild the high points of that star border with a little bit of luster powder and I'm going to show you how I did it on one that's already dry. We'll come back to this and then mount a tassel on top and we'll be through. I actually gilded this one already and let me just show you how I did that. It won't hurt for me to reapply it. I've taken a little bit of old gold luster dust and I'm extending it with any kind of gold luster dust will be fine as long as there's a little bit of shine to it. And I'm extending it with a little bit of lemon extract, an alcohol-based extender. I don't want to use water because it, this particular powder doesn't extend well in water, but also water takes longer to evaporate and it can etch into or dissolve underlying icing. So I've just created a little paint with it. I'm using my sponge brush and I'll just sponge it directly on to the seam like so. And that adds the little gold accents that you see. Hopefully you can see them getting a little bit golder as I do this. But again, the icing needs to be completely dry in order to do that. So that I would let dry easily. Oh, you know, I don't know, an hour or more. It's clearly got to be dry to the touch. Okay, so off that goes. And I'm going to put the tassel on the top, this little piece here on top of the one that we just did. And that tassel is made out of frosting sheets. As I said, I'm on a bit of a frosting sheet kick. And I used my handy frosting sheet punch. Frosting sheets are edible papers made with cornstarch, typically in sugar. I used a craft paper punch to cut out these fun shapes and then simply spritz them with gold luster spray. You could spray the whole sheet and then punch out for, you know, spray the whole sheet first and then punch or spray the pieces and then spray. It's sometimes easier to spray the whole sheet because, as you can see, these smaller pieces will fly away. So this is pretty heavy on one side. I'm going to let that sit, pick that up and slide it to the side to dry before I touch it from the top. Because you can see it's still quite moist there. So keep that spray can moving around to ensure an even application of the gold luster spray. Okay, I've got some that I've already sprayed and then to, simply to make those tassels, all I do while it's still kind of moist is stick them to, you know, shape them together like that. If you want them to stay in place, I take a little bit of white icing glue and that sometimes helps to keep them in place. And you can pinch them as in half or you can pinch them, or pinch them in quarters to create these little, little tassel pieces. And here's, this one's already dry. It was pretty heavy before but it's fairly dry already. I might just glue it here. If it gets too wet, it will dissolve and break. See how that broke there? So, you know, try to get a, a pretty light 
touch on it and then let it dry before you bend it if it's too wet. Okay, now to insert the tassels, I'm just gonna take some that I made earlier that are a little firmer and stick them on top. And because my brown icing is still slightly wet, I might be able to stick it directly to that without adding any more icing. I'm gonna need a little bit of icing glue, I think, but not much. And I'm gonna use brown for this just because I've got brown up here already. And I'm gonna stick one here. And so that it views well from all sides, I'm gonna take another tassel. They're a little flat on one side just because I laid them down and I'm gonna stick another one back here. But I am gonna glue it with white icing to the other one behind it so they stay together. And that, that should do it. Give that some drying time again, as long as it takes to dry the seams, and then you're ready to hang it. Couple tips on hanging it. We're not gonna hang this one obviously because it's still drying. I find the best way to, to, tie these, to tie these is to do a little slip knot through the hole. So I've taken a, a long piece of ribbon and I fold it in half and then I'll you know, feed that through from underneath and through the hole and tie a little slip knot. The, because that hole is pretty small, a little tip here is you might want to wrap it with a little bit of tape to get it through the hole and then pull it out um, through the top. Okay, so to give you assurance that this will actually hang when it's dry, I'm gonna move this one over and pick up one that I did, I put together just yesterday. I've got these when I'm not, when they're not hanging, I store them sideways on, on bubble wrap and I wanna make sure my hands are clean because I am gonna support it a little bit from the underside as I pick it up. So there you have it. And of course you can drop the ribbon. I cut these ribbons really, really long. These, these would look wonderful filled with wafer paper flowers, which we're gonna show in the next video. Till then, live sweetly. Thank you.